Welcome to this GCSE episode from the Science Revision channel on the blood and blood vessels. We're going to go through all the important things you need to know. So let's dive straight in with the blood. First thing you need to know about the blood is the blood is actually a tissue because the definition of a tissue is a group of cells working together to carry out a function. Obviously the blood's part of the circulatory system, which consists of blood vessels, the blood, and obviously the heart. So the cells that make up the blood are the red blood cells, the white blood cells, and the platelets. And what we need to do is to be able to describe how each of these do their job. So let's jump in and look at the red blood cell. The red blood cell's main job is to carry oxygen around the body to the cells that need it for respiration. So they take their journey all the way around the body, dropping off oxygen, and you need to know how it's adapted. The first thing you'll notice is the shape of the red blood cell. It's biconcaved, and this means it's donut shaped. And the idea of this is it gives it a bigger surface area for absorbing oxygen. The second thing is the color. The red pigment inside is a pigment called hemoglobin. And what that does is it binds reversibly to oxygen. So that as the blood travels around the body, it drops it off. They also are one of the cells that have no nucleus. And the idea of this is it gives it more space for carrying oxygen. So more space for hemoglobin. The next type of blood cell is a lot bigger than the red blood cell. It's a white blood cell. And these are involved in fighting off pathogens. Uh, so bacteria or viruses. Uh, so they form part of our body's immune system. So they have a nucleus, unlike the red blood cell. And the nucleus is important. And they're also a lot larger than the red blood cells. There are two main types of white blood cell that we need to know about. There are ones called lymphocytes. And their main job is that they produce um, antibodies, which are a type of protein which are used for destroying microorganisms. It binds them together. So it binds the pathogens together. And then there are ones called phagocytes. And what they do is they are the ones that engulf pathogens. So they almost almost looks like it's eating, it's not eating. Um, but basically they engulf and then destroy the pathogens. So two types, lymphocytes and phagocytes. Then we have the platelets. And what the platelets actually are, is there are fragments of cells. They don't have any nucleus and their primary role is to help clotting the blood. Okay, so they're made from small fragments of cell with no nucleus. And the idea is, is that they stop the body from losing too much blood. And they also stop microorganisms from entering and they form a clot at the wound. So very, very important to stop us from being harmed. So they've got the three main types of cell and then we've got this yellow straw-like liquid called plasma. And what the plasma basically does is it carries everything inside the blood. So it's colors, pale, straw, uh, colored liquid. It carries the cell and all the dissolved substances. So we've got our red blood cells, we've got our white blood cells, we've got our platelets that get carried by it. And then there are lots of things that dissolved in it. So the glucose and the amino acids we get from our diet, that will travel in the blood plasma. Also carbon dioxide from respiring cells gets carried by the blood plasma. We also have things like urea, which is a waste product. The blood carries it to the kidneys where we filter it out. Also things like hormones, uh, they get um, secreted directly into the blood. And then we have things like antibodies and antitoxins uh, that are produced by white blood cells, which also get carried. If we were to centrifuge the blood, that means to spin it around really quickly, it would separate the blood out into its different sections. And what we can actually see is that the part of the blood, which is the plasma, makes up 55% of the blood. If we think about white blood cells and platelets, they only make up less than 1% of the blood. The rest of it is all red blood cells, so 45% carrying oxygen around the body to where it's needed. So we're now gonna look at the blood vessels and you need to be able to label the key differences between the three types of blood vessels. They are the arteries. We also have the veins 
and then we have the fine fine ones which are called the capillaries these are the small blood vessels so we need to know what they do and we need to be able to label the key parts of arteries veins and capillaries a little exam tip for you arteries begin with the letter a a for away so arteries take blood away from the heart okay so they take the blood away from the heart and this blood is under very high pressure because it's right next to the heart. And the way they're adapted to do this is they have this thick muscular wall um, and elastic fibers uh, which are make up the main part of the artery. And the lumen, which is the hole in the middle, is actually quite small. That's the space where the blood flows. Uh, and that means that the blood is kept under high pressure. Uh, we then have the veins, and the little tip for you here is they has the word in, veins, and that is because they carry blood in towards the heart. Now the thing that you'll notice straight away about the veins is the lumen, which is the big gap in the middle, is large, so the blood is under low pressure. And, and therefore it doesn't need to have the thick walls, it's got thin muscular walls, well, thinner than arteries. And also because the blood's under um, the less pressure, there are actually structures which stop the blood from flowing backwards. So they've got thinner walls, they've got a wider lumen uh, for the blood flow, but then they have these structures over here called valves, and the blood goes in one direction because there are valves present and they prevent backflow. So the blood gets pumped in one direction and as the blood tries to drop back down, it shuts the valves. Which then brings us on to capillaries. These are the smallest of blood vessels and they're at low pressure. There's a tiny lumen which is only enough to allow one blood cell through at a time. So the red blood cells actually push against the walls of the inside of the capillaries and those walls are also only one cell thick and that's to allow oxygen and other things to diffuse through the wall really easy. If we now take a look at this animation we can see a capillary going through some tissues and we've got the red blood cells traveling in single file through the capillaries and what the red blood cells are doing is they're dropping off oxygen to those cells for respiration. Those cells are obviously producing carbon dioxide under the waste products and they are diffusing back into the capillaries. So the arrows out that represents sugar and oxygen and the arrows going back into the capillary represents waste products such as carbon dioxide and the capillaries take those substances away. So they're very fine and they're very leaky. I'm now going to show you a demonstration of making three blood vessels out of rubber tubing and looking at what the pressure difference is like. So let's go into the lab. So the first thing you can see here is I have a rubber tube with quite a large lumen. That one's a bit finer and then I've got a third tube here with a very very narrow lumen. And what I'm trying to do here is to make an artery. So there is my artery. The lumen's a bit narrow, the walls are very, very thick and muscular and elastic. There's my vein, and there is my capillary. And what I'm going to try to do is uh, to make my capillary a bit more leaky, is to get a compass and just punch lots of little holes in the side, because it's very leaky. And there we go, we can see that would allow water to escape. So here we have a vein, the lumen's nice and wide an artery with thicker muscular walls and then our capillary which is a very very fine uh, and it would be a lot smaller than that anyway let's try the vein so I'm going to try to keep the water pressure constant for these three and if we look at the water inside the vein we can see it's not really under so much pressure it's just leaking out the top if I then stick an artery on, you can see because the lumen's so much more narrow, we've got that real high pressure. Then we get to the capillary, and the idea is here is that it starts off at high pressure, but by the time it goes through all the little holes and the tissue fluid goes out with oxygen and sugar and everything in, the pressure drops quite hugely as it goes through the actual capillary tube there. 
and you can see it, the liquid spilling out. Obviously a capillary to scale would be a lot smaller than that, but you get the idea. The pressure is highest under the artery and lower in veins, which is why they have valves and even lower in capillaries. I hope you found that video useful. Click subscribe if you want to see more videos. Leave a comment below if you want to. Uh, take care. See you. Bye-bye.